Hello again, high flyers. Welcome back to Fly High with Carola Pilot. I'm here today at European Rotors 2024 in Amsterdam, where I had the privilege of interviewing key figures from the Robinson Helicopter Company. We discussed exciting innovations like their new symmetrical stabilizer, upcoming training courses, and even their work with drones. Let's dive right in with Robin Eagles, Head of Global Marketing and Communications at Robinson Helicopter. Robinson Helicopter is a 50-year-old company based in Torrance, California. Uh, we have three aircraft, the R-22, 44, and the 66. Uh, this is our first time here at European Rotors, and we're really uh, thrilled to be here to meet our European customers and dealers, um, service centers. We're so happy to have you here. <laughs> you have a new CEO. We do. Uh, February of this year, the Robinson family stepped back, and uh, David Smith, has taken over as the CEO of the company. So he's been on board for about nine months now and we have a lot of big plans for the future. All right, Bitch. We're really excited about our training side of the house. Over the next five years, we are planning on launching 18 new additional training courses. Oh, wow. Um, we're actually branching out for the first time outside of the state of California in 2025. We're gonna be taking our safety courses outside the state of California in partnership with our dealers and service centers. So we're gonna wow. be looking to branch out and not only go domestically, but also go internationally as well with some of these courses. We're also showcasing the new symmetrical horizontal stabilizer. Uh, we're currently in the process of seeking certification for that stabilizer, and we expect to see that happen before the end of the year this year. Have you been testing it? The horizontal stabilizer has been in test for quite some time. Uh, we've been working on it for several years to ensure that it meets all of the requirements for both the FAA, for EASA, and to increase uh, flight characteristics in all different types of weather situations. So we can see you in Europe? Absolutely. Yeah, Europe, Europe Australia, okay. all over the world we're okay. going to be branching out. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, what can we look forward to? What kind of uh, safety courses? Is so, this uh, safety course or is there new ones coming out? Well, uh, so the existing course we have is our R22, R44 and R66 safety courses. Mm -hmm. We're also developing an R66 transition course right now that will be also launching for 2025. We really want to extend our footprint and grow. Uh, Robinson Helicopter is really looking forward to a very steady and sustainable growth over the next <laughs> five to ten years. So I think you know they help, we're about to hit 15,000 helicopters yeah. in operation uh, and we're looking to increase that steadily over the next several years. Tell us your plans for the sure. future. I mean, one thing that, that you'll meet if you come to the booth and see our business, you'll meet new people that we've added to the team to help cover some areas that in the past have been covered by a relatively small group of folks across too many functions. So we're trying to add resources. So people are really important, of course, in this business. So you'll meet Randy Schaefer, who leads our customer service team, We've and Will Fulton, who's got business development. We also meet our team from Ascent that we bought uh, the drone company in April and have added them to our full production capabilities. We're building them in Torrance now uh, alongside the helicopters. So that's pretty exciting. And so some of the things in the future that you're going to see is increased collaboration between the manned and unmanned aircraft. You'll see certainly investments in our core business of making aircraft more affordable and more accessible to broader more markets. More affordable? Yes, of course. Exciting. So you actually just saw it. I mean, on the 66, we just extended the life of most of the components, yes. double yes. length. So that. And, you know, in terms of cost, that almost entirely went to the customer, right? So we see that, that kind of thing. We're going to keep trying to invest uh, in those R&D type projects that extend the life of other components. And so you'll see more from us there. But again, the other big part is just making the business run smoother, making it easier to do business with us, um, simpler processes for things like warranty and core processing, mm -hmm. uh, just a simpler process to buy an aircraft, that kind of thing. So, so I think that appeals to people these days. I mean, no one really likes to run through red tape and yeah. bureaucracy, so yeah. we, we try very hard to stay lean on those. Um, but, but again, other not exciting things, we're working on new products and product extensions, so uh, you'll see a lot out of us in the next several months, and um, we're excited to share more of what's going on in the product development side, but not today. We're leading the trends. We were the first, really, to look at this as a, a, a competitive imperative, and, and after we did our initial uh, acquisition efforts, uh, Airbus announced they were doing the same. Ours closed sooner, but... Um, Again, it's the sort of example where we're not going to really focus on where we are relative to the pack, but the idea of leveraging what vertical lift can offer and unmanned units can augment 
Uh, we look at it as the future of things like public safety applications and search and rescue. A lot of these R66s are in police application now. They spend a good bit of time chasing down missing persons that, yeah. that really, you know, it's time sensitive. If they're in the middle of uh, Florida where there's alligators and swamps and things, Absolutely. time is of the essence. So today we have three R66s flying in one county and the goal is to give them a handful of the drones alongside that can be worked collaboratively from the cockpit. Uh, that capability is ready now. It just has to be sort of scaled and produ produced, but it's the capability of today. So Excellent. super exciting opportunities yeah. for everybody. Actually, this is one of the things we're trying to get more folks flying with. So you can see the, the difference between this one yeah. and that guy. This kind of a so this is for bird strikes. Correct. Yeah, this can take if. And in fact, our, our best example, the record number is nine birds so far on one aircraft. Wow. That has hit, hit this and it doesn't scratch it or, or dent it or anything. It basically can take it at nearly the max speed of the aircraft, but really it's it's designed and tested for the cruise speed. So um, Is that that famous video with the chicken That's right, that's right. <laughs> flying and, and into the... You know, the really interesting thing about regulation is that when we went through this project, there was no there's no pra uh, practical way for them to apply a Part 29 transport category aircraft standard to a Part 27 aircraft. Yeah. So when we did this work, we did it knowing there would be no credit for it, mm. but of course we want this for the safety. In the end, Absolutely. it doesn't necessarily matter. The bird doesn't care what paper the aircraft no. is certified to. So for us, this we know this is going to save lives and it has made a Excellent. you know a big impact on the the customers that fly in heavy Definitely. bird environments, you know. Right. So this is our new symmetric stabilizer for the R-22, R-44, and R-66 helicopters. So all of our new production helicopters are equipped with the symmetric stabilizer. Yeah. Uh, previously, Robinson helicopters were known for their asymmetric stabilizer, yeah. uh, where the horizontal stabilizer was only on one side of the tail. Uh, right. Now we've changed that design. Uh, and this stabilizer mounts uh, forward a little bit on the tail and is obviously even to the left and the right sides of the helicopter. Okay, and what does this bring to? So the benefit of the symmetric stabilizer is it decouples the rolling motion from the pitching motion of the helicopter. So uh, astute pilots would have noticed previously that uh, at high air speeds, when you put a pitch uh, change into the helicopter, you get a little bit of a roll. Uh, most people just correct for that without noticing. Uh, but a particular note uh, was, of course, the low G condition, which is well known uh, and trained for in the Robinson helicopter, yeah. that if you got outside of the limitations to a low G, the helicopter might roll to the right. Uh, with the new design, that is no longer present. Uh, if you get to a low G condition, the helicopter does not have a tendency to roll to the right anymore. That's excellent. Yes. So that, that helps with the, the mass bumping. Uh, so it is a, still a two-bladed teetering rotor, Obviously, so mass bumping is still, still a possibility. Yeah. Uh, but what this does do is it removes the right rolling tendency, uh, which then uh, doesn't provide the reason for a pilot to put in an incorrect control input. Exactly. Uh, so they no longer are tempted to put in a they left roll. They won't get that. They can just reload the rotor Brilliant. Uh, by pulling straight back on the site. Okay, so that's gonna that's a game changer. Uh, we think it's a significant uh, improvement to the aircraft, uh, and we are encouraging our operators in the field uh, to take the retrofit kit and modify their aircraft to the new symmetric stabilizer. Hi. You're with Ascent uh, Aerosystems, which is now a Robinson helicopter company. Yes, we are. And what are these beautiful? Well, we're here at European Rotors with our family of coaxial unmanned aerial vehicles, so small drones built on a completely different technology platform than what most people think of when they think of drones. Yeah, they, yeah. they certainly don't look like the classical drones that we're used to seeing. No, they do not. Um, built on a coaxial platform, which is not new, developed by Leonardo da Vinci hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It actually has more um, capab capability into the drone. It flies longer, farther, faster, can carry more. And it's really courtesy of the laws of physics and the laws of aerodynamics that just makes it a much more capable view. So where did this idea come from? So Ascent has been around for about 10 years. Oh, and right. actually, the idea originated by two brothers in Phoenix, Arizona. They happened to be hikers, mm -hmm. mountain climbers, and mm -hmm. they would often get to the top of a route and look back and think, how much easier could this have been if we had had something that we could deploy, check out the route, and then follow that? So from that, they happened to be engineers. They were working in the space industry at the time. Um, they developed the very first version of the Ascent drones family. They partnered with our current CEO, Peter Fuchs, and with that was born Ascent Aerosystems, and 10 years later, here we are, part of the Robinson Helicopter family. Right. And what is the future now of Ascent Oh, I think it's great. The idea of manned and unmanned teaming 
looking at the helicopter and capabilities for rotorcraft operators, all the things that you can do with a drone that you can't do with a helicopter, but because it makes it better, not instead of, in addition to. And I think the reception we've received here has been fantastic. Excellent. We've been to a couple of other places, other shows with Robinson, and we've heard the same thing. So Brilliant. we're super excited. Oh, well, we're very excited to see the developments and see what yes. the future holds. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. It was great to talk to you. <laughs>